How's it going guys, this is Zerai here. So we finally got an opportunity of seeing a brand new trailer for an Assassin's Creed Red, but now it's called Assassin's Creed Shadows. So with the names change, and of course kind of gives a little bit of a better summary of what to expect within the game. And of course with its recent live action trailer, and of course a little bit of a devs interview regarding of this game, we got a little bit more summarization of what to expect within this game. Now of course there were a lot of leaks going on th through many months before this game even was announced properly. Even though we did know for a few years that we will be getting a Japanese setting, Feudal Japan and stuff, uh, Assassin's Creed, back in like, what, 20, 2022, 2021? Insane just to think about that. And now we are finally going to be getting it on, on the November the 15th, 2024, and only on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and of course PC. Now the thing is, well, thankfully, in my personal opinion, I'm glad the way that they decided to move away from PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles. Those old gen consoles, unfortunately, they will be a big limiters for a brand new game that a lot of people will be expecting big things out of. Now, again, I have to mention this before I proceed. Vote with your wallet. You know how Ubisoft is like? They usually always tend to oversell their games, and in a lot of cases, and actually every time they show off their trailers and they look fantastic. And mind you, the trailer did look fantastic. Everything I'm hearing about it, I'm genuinely am looking forward to it. But again, wait until you see for yourself this game and see from the reliable reviewers what they think about this game. How different is it comparing this to an Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey and of course Valhalla? As we already known that Assassin's Creed Shadows this time <laughs> is gonna have dual protagonists. Naoe and as a shinobi assassin and Yasuke, a legendary samurai. As Naoe is actually going to be mainly focused as an assassin stealth oriented player, well, as you are the player, and of course this means that Yasuke is going to be on the other side, basically more of a brute strength. So such that Noe is actually more oriented with the agility and Yasuke is all about power and precision. You will be able to unlock new skills, gear, and progression independently from each of the characters. So this means most likely that these characters do not have interwined skill tree. I'm kind of glad about that, to be honest with you. There's a little bit of extra mention that you can build up your own network of spies to be your eyes and ears across the locations to hunt down your next targets. I did hear that there's also going to be a possibility whenever you take down these camps, or strongholds, you can capture a VIP enemy and you have a decision of killing them or letting them live. And if you do let them live, in this case, they will become your spies. But if you decide to kill them, you will actually earn their loot. So kind of ha you have to make a little bit of a decision there. You will be able to create a fully customizable hideout for your growing Shinobi League. So it will be quite curious to see how much of can they really implement this. Really I'm hoping it's not going to be anything similar to what that was as strongholds of your own camp in uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Because in that game, well, it was very, very limited. In fact, I would say it wasn't even necessary to have. Extra details that there will be an unpredictable weather, changing seasons and reactive environments. Map is actually going to be smaller than Assassin's Creed Origins and focuses on the central region of the Japan. And you know what? That's a big plus. Thank you. I do not need anything bigger than Assassin's Creed Origins because Odyssey and Valhalla were ridiculously large. An extra mention regarding the Naoe tools, she will have grappling hooks, smoke bombs, kunai, shuriken, and hidden blade, while Yasuke will not actually have those. In instead, he will be more of an attack block parry sort of a ca character with large varieties of weapons, including such as, of course, the katana, kanabo, bows, naginata, and more. And of course, while I was watching this trailer, I want to be honest, my first initial reaction didn't necessarily intrigue me to the point, oh my god, day one, right now, I have to get it. No. Instead, because I feel that I have seen plenty of times what Ubisoft titles do in terms of the Assassin's Creed games, well, again, they try to oversell these games. And I don't think that this trailer really sold me. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, 
you know, if they kind of try to preserve your expectations, maybe that's actually a good thing. And of course, there's still plenty of time until we see more of this game. And on top of that, Ubisoft Connect or Ubisoft Showcase, I should say, will be coming soon in June. Uh, definitely will be some sort of a gameplay presentation there. I'm definitely I'm looking forward to and seeing th at that point how different will it be from an Assassin's Creed Valhalla or any other Assassin's Creed games that we have seen before. Nevertheless, this is pretty exciting. You know, I do tend to like Assassin's Creed games in general, and I am looking forward to see what they got in store with this one. And I just hope, I hope it will turn out to be good. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to have a little bit of a chat for today. Thank you so much for watching, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys all, and have a wonderful day. And you, will you continue down that river? Or choose another path beyond what we see? Then we must look for it together. We must learn to trust, rebuild, and follow the blade. That served the light. Ah! <laughs>